So for 51 weeks out of the year, whenever I plan for worship services and have a children's message for the kids, I start with the message that is set for what the adult message will be. And the readings, the themes for the day, where I'm hoping to go with something that you can take on your Sunday and apply it to the rest of your week beginning on Monday. And so then when it comes to the kids' talk, I try to take that point for adults and make it come alive, make sense of it for a kid. So I got to thinking last week, as last week our theme in worship was that we are all the children of God. Well, how fair is that? How fair is that? That the kids always have to learn from what the adult message is. Maybe there should be at least one Sunday a year where we take what the message is for the kids and try to apply it to the adults. And so that's what I want to do today, as I believe that the points that we learned this week at Vacation Bible School were so good and so applicable, and because we are all the children of God, that we also can learn from something that's important to our kids that should be important to us as God's kids as well. A theme verse that was before us this week that we heard from again and again was Psalm 106. And in this passage, we see the goodness of God. And so look with me again at a few words from Psalm 106, where it says, Praise the Lord, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord or fully declare His praise? When our ancestors were in Egypt, they gave no thought to your miracles. They did not remember your many kindnesses, and they rebelled by the sea, the Red Sea. And yet He, that is the Lord, Yet the Lord saved them for his name's sake to make his mighty power known. He rebuked the Red Sea and it dried up. He led them through the depths as through a desert. He saved them from the hand of the foe, from the hand of the enemy. He redeemed them. The waters covered their adversaries. Not one of them survived. And then verse number 12, then they believed his promises and they sang his praise. A goal that we have at Mount Olive each and every week, but especially for a week like Vacation Bible School, is that kids of all backgrounds and places can come and believe the promises of God and be able to sing His praise. And we were so blessed this week to have this house of God filled with the children of God. The majority of them are not members of our congregation. They live in our greater community. And we are blessed that their families bring them so that we can serve them with the message of Jesus, so that they can hear of the promises of Jesus, they can believe in those promises, and then sing and sing and sing. And as some of you can testify, when those CDs from Vacation Bible School get in your minivan's audio player, they don't leave because the kids keep singing the whole year through. They believe His promises, and they sing His praise. Well, as we focused upon the different promises of God this week, we had the help of different African animals. And so each kid was assigned to a group that was marked with a different animal, a Bible buddy. And each week, one of those, each day, one of those groups was highlighted as we learned the stories that highlight the goodness of God that God is so good and so loving to all of his children. And so on day number one, here's who we met. We met Mac, the amazing rhinoceros. And I love Mac, the rhinoceros. And it kind of reminds me of a unicorn, if you will. But Mac, the amazing rhinoceros, taught us the Bible point, when life is unfair, God is good. And every time, as you heard some of the kids in the children's message do today, Every time they learned a Bible point, they responded with their fist in the air saying, God is good. The story that was the focus of our Monday together on Mac the Rhino's day was the story of the Israelites enslaved in Egypt. And in the book of Exodus, in the earliest chapters, it tells us that God had hand-selected his people to be his own, to always declare his praise. And yet he put them in situations where where they were troubled, and where they could easily be filled with doubt. The Israelites were enslaved in Egypt, and under the mighty control of their slave drivers, they were in forced labor, and they felt as if they were not under the provision of God. It would have been easy for them to give up on their faith, easy for them to say, God, we know that you established a relationship with our people long ago, but it doesn't feel like you care about us anymore. The kids went to Bible story adventures, and the Bible storytellers were able to go through and act that out and make this story come alive for the kids. 
as they felt what it felt like to be an Israelite and be told by your slave driver, you are worthless, you Hebrew. They would have cried out to God, this isn't fair, this isn't right. And sometimes we all do the same. If you talk to a kid, they might tell you it's not fair when one person gets in trouble and the other person doesn't when they were both doing the same thing. It's not fair that their sibling gets to stay up till 11 o'clock at night when they have to go to bed at 9 o'clock. It's not fair for one person to be sick and another person to be healthy. And we as people often say that about life too. It's not fair. I'm a good person. Why do bad things happen to me? It's not fair. If God is a God of love, why do I struggle so much? It's not fair fair. But in the midst of a world that seems so unfair, God raised up for the Israelites a leader named Moses. Moses who drew people back to the promises of God, including that promise that we see in Nahum 1 verse 7, where it says, the Lord is good. He's a strong refuge for when trouble comes. Yes, when life is unfair, when we cry out, it's not fair, it's not fair, may we also cry out to our God who even in the unfairness of life shows us that he is good and we can rely upon him. The ancients did. They relied upon him even when they were enslaved in Egypt and they relied upon him even stronger when plagues came down upon the Egyptians. The plagues of Egypt was the focus of day number two when Hooper the Hoopo bird was our featured Bible buddy, reminding us that when life is scary, God is good. Those plagues that came upon Egypt, the the boils and the locusts and the gnats and the frogs and the darkness that covered their land to the point where they couldn't even see their own hands in front of their faces would have scared the Egyptians. But none would have been as scary as the final plague when a destroyer came through and was going to wipe out the firstborn children of the Egyptian families. And in the middle of that, God's people would have been scared as well. And yet God in his goodness provided a remedy for that destroyer, that angel of death that was passing over. And he provided through the form of a lamb. And so the Israelites were told to bring a lamb into their midst and sacrifice the lamb. And with the blood of the lamb to smear it over the doorposts and along the door frames of their homes. And when the angel of death would see the blood of the lamb, it would pass over and spare them. That reminds us of an even greater Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world so that the scariest of all the scary things in life would not be able to afflict us forever. For God Himself has provided what we need in His goodness. It's interesting when you talk to the kids about the plagues of Egypt and then you ask them about what scares them in their world. A lot of them seem to say the same thing when I went around with a microphone. They said they were scared of the dark. They were scared of things in their closet at night. They were scared of intruders. They were scared of bad people. You know, things that kids think about that they're scared about. And so we were able to say to the kids, even when you're scared about things like that, you have a God who comes alongside of you and he protects you and he will comfort you. And even when life is scary, God is good. But there's other things that scare us too. You watch the news, it's scary. You hear predictions for the future, it's scary. You wonder what's going to happen in your life, it's scary. But the reminder that is good enough for children should be good enough for all of us. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid for you are close beside me. Yes, life is scary, but God, you are good. In that goodness and grace of our God, on day number three, we got to meet a massive animal called a Cape Buffalo. And Marge, I think, was probably my favorite animal of this week because I just think he's just like, I don't know, Marge is just super good looking. I don't know what else to say about her. Just very stunning, very striking. But Marge, Marge the Cape Buffalo was the one who taught us about the different changes in life. And when life changes, God is good. The big change that happened for the Israelites, as we talked about this week, was when God finally answered their prayer and delivered them out of their slavery in Egypt through the Red Sea and into the wilderness. But when they got into the wilderness, even though they had already seen the goodness of God rescuing them from the Egyptians, the goodness of God in drowning the Egyptians when they were trying to pursue them, they get out into the desert and they start complaining. 
And they start complaining because their stomachs are growling and they're hungry and their mouths are parched because they're thirsty. And they turn to Moses, the leader that God had raised up for them, and they said, why did you do this to us? Why did you bring us out here? Are you trying to lead us to death? And God wouldn't do that. God isn't going to let his people suffer forever. But instead, through the changes of life, he's going to see, he's going to show them that he provides for all that they need. He took them to water, and at first the water was bitter and unable to be drunk, but then with a stick dashed into the water, that water was purified, and the Israelites drank as the kids did this week. And then when they were hungry, he led them to look upon the ground, and day after day after day, he gave them manna from heaven and quail, the birds that came as well, to give them protein that they needed, reminding them that though they were not in their homes, though that they were on a journey, though life was changing, God was still good. You see, sometimes when we go through changes in life, like switching schools or switching jobs or switching homes, or many kids go through the changes that happen in families when there's divorce or problems at home, they may be tempted to say, is God still with me through it all? But even through the ups and downs of life, through the changes that come our way, God promises to be faithful and to be there for His children so that they can call on Him. As it says, give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His love endures forever. So in a changing world, there is one who never changes and who is always faithful to His own. And His name is Jesus. Day number four, Thursday, gave us a chance to focus in especially upon the person and work of Jesus Christ. I love that about Vacation Bible School, that there's always one day during the week where we focus on the story that matters most, the death and resurrection of Jesus. And the Bible buddy for that day was this Zion the Lion. And Zion the Lion reminded us that when life is sad, God is good. And Zion the lion, who is often considered the king of the jungle, taught the kids to remember that though the lion may seem like the king, there's an even greater king than he. And that king is Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah. And it seemed to God's children, Jesus' followers, that they would be filled with sadness and grief because they followed their leader, they followed their Savior, and yet he was betrayed and he was stricken and he was afflicted and he was punished unjustly. And he was sentenced to die, and he was taken off and taken away to a hill to be crucified. And the followers of Jesus were filled with grief. They were filled with sadness, and they wondered what was going on. Why was God doing that to their leader and to their brother? And yet in that crucifixion of Jesus, we see the goodness of God. Because he, through Christ, took away our sin, and the death that we deserved was placed upon him so that when he was buried in the ground, he would put our sins to death forever. And that on Easter Sunday, when he came back to life, he would show that even though life is sad, God is oh so good. And if he would reach down into our hearts and lives, and he would have a redemptive purpose for the struggles that kids face, that even when their heart is breaking, what does the Bible say about God? The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. That you may feel that way today as well that your heart may be breaking, your heart may be torn, your heart may be sad, and yet God is up to something. For He reaches down and He is close to you. For when life is sad, God is good. A lot of negative stuff, but that's the world in which we live. And we talked about it this week with all of our kids. But on day number five, as we talked and set aside the things that are not fair and the things that are scary and the things that are changing... And we set aside even the sadness of life. We got to that fifth and final point of the week when we met Savannah the giraffe. And Savannah the giraffe reminded us that when life is good, God is good. And in Joshua chapters 3 and 4, it tells us the story about Joshua where he took over where Moses had left off. And we're finally, after 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, God's people finally arrived at the promised land. And God helped them to cross into the promised land. And though they still had battles, though they still were going to have struggles before them, he reminded them of how good he was. And he led them into the promised land and they processed in, as our kids did this week, with the beautiful Ark of the Covenant that held in it Aaron's staff and 
the jar of the manna that God provided, and even tablets of stone for the Ten Commandments. And they followed this ark, <clears throat> ark into the Promised Land. And when they got in there, they joined with the leaders of God's people in making a memorial of rocks to celebrate the faithfulness of God. Because you see, my friends, just as the kids learn this week, you can learn too, that God is so good. And because God is good, He gives you many good things in life. He gives you forgiveness and love and joy. He gives you friends and neighbors and families and churches. He gives you vacation Bible school and songs to sing and promises to believe in, reminding you that God, yes, is so good, and He will fill your life with His blessing. So 51 weeks out of the year, we tend to focus upon the message for the adults and say, kids, we hope you can gain something from what the adults are talking about today. But I hope on this week, we can at least let the kids lead us. That not just these Bible points that they learned this week that can inspire us as well, but just seeing their joy as you saw this morning and their enthusiasm for Jesus, that that would be contagious to us and that we would also be inspired as the children of God. As it said in Psalm 106, how do we respond? That we believe His promises and that we would sing His praise. May we do that, for we are all the children of God, and because we belong to God, we can say, Oh God, you are good.